section 613 is called first order nucleophilic substitution. This is abbreviated the SN1 reaction. So for example, here's a reaction with tert-butyl bromide. Tert-butyl bromide will react with methanol CH3OH and it produces tert-butyl methoxide and HBr. Just looking at the general reaction here, not the mechanism, you can see that this is definitely a substitution reaction. And we know that it's a substitution reaction because the bromine is being replaced by methoxide. But we also know that this substitution reaction can't be an SN2 reaction for two reasons. If we remember back to what you learned about the SN2 mechanism, there's two reasons that this reaction would never take place by SN2. One of them is because the substrate is a tertiary alkyl halide. Tertiary alkyl halides you learned never, essentially never, react by SN2. They are too bulky and the nucleophile can't get into the carbon atom to do the attack and kick the leaving group off. So because this is a tertiary carbon, this is a tertiary alkyl halide, there is no way that this can be doing SN2. The other reason that uh, this mechanism can't proceed by SN2 is that the nucleophile, the methanol, is a really weak nucleophile. There's no motivation for this reaction to take place by SN2. The methanol, the CH3OH, this is a pretty stable molecule all by itself. The alkyl halide is a pretty stable molecule all by itself. There isn't any motivation for this reaction to occur. In the SN2 mechanism, our nucleophiles need to be strong. They need to have negative charges on them. They need to be strong bases, and that's not what we have here with this reaction. So the mechanism by which this reaction occurs is the SN1 mechanism, and its reaction looks like this. So first I'm going to draw out the tert-butyl bromide and in the SN2 reaction the nucleophile would initiate this reaction or the reaction would initiate by the, nucleoph by the nucleophile striking this carbon and kicking the bromine off and there's no room for the nucleophile to get into this carbon. The nucleophile doesn't even want to get into this carbon because it's stable on its own. So this mechanism actually is initiated by loss of the leaving group. That's the first thing that happens. The leaving group comes off the molecule and that creates a carbocation. And this carbocation is pretty stable because it's tertiary. Uh, so it's stable enough that it's going to, the reaction's going to happen. It's not impossible, although it is a pretty thermodynamically slow step. So we call this first step the slow step of the mechanism. It's the thing that takes the most energy. 
Um, once this step has um, gone, then the rest of the reaction proceeds pretty well. Now that we've created a carbocation, it's a good electrophile, we have motivation for the reaction. Even though the methanol by itself is all weak, when you put it in the presence of a good electrophile, you're going to have a reaction take place. So we're going to have the nucleophile being drawn to the positive charge on that carbon atom. And that's going to create an intermediate. Excuse me, actually it's going to be a transition state. It's not going to be an intermediate where you have the methanol. Oh, can't see that. The methanol has bonded via the oxygen to the carbon that used to hold the bromine. And we've got a positive charge on the oxygen atom. The oxygen isn't all that happy. And this is, it's a pretty high energy transition state. Now, this molecule is really easily stabilized by plucking off this hydrogen atom and allowing these electrons to end up as a lone pair on the oxygen. And the easiest way that we're going to abstract this proton is just with another molecule of methanol. So we'll just bring another molecule of methanol, a second molecule of methanol into the mechanism. The lone pair of electrons on the methanol will go to that proton, remove it, from this transition state and the oxygen-hydrogen bonding electrons will end up as a lone pair, a second lone pair on that oxygen atom. So we then will end up with our product Oops, that's supposed to be a carbon. So this is an OCH3 and there's our reaction. And that's the, this is an example of the SN1 mechanism. This whole entire process is sometimes referred to as solvolysis. A solvolysis is a particular type of reaction where a substrate, like in this case the uh, turret butyl bromide, is reacting with a nucleophile that also serves as the solvent. In this reaction, the methanol is the nucleophile and it's also the solvent for the reaction. Last thing that I want to draw associated with this mechanism is an energy diagram. So we can compare that to the energy diagram of SN1. Now, if you remember the energy diagram for SN1, it was a single step reaction that looked like this. In the SN2 reaction, we've got two steps. We've got first the loss of the leaving group, which is the hard step, and that's the one that has the highest activation energy. And that brings us down to this carbocation intermediate. And then the second step, the attachment of the methanol molecule to form the transition state and then back down to the product. I drew that as an endothermic reaction. Probably should have drawn it as an exothermic reaction. Let's try that again. All that really matters, all that's really important to me is that you see the two steps of the reaction and that we can associate them with different steps in the mechanism. So this intermediate is the carbocation. This transition state is that structure right there. Our product is down here. Our reactant is obviously that guy. And this transition state is somewhere in between uh, the, it's just the loss of the, the breaking of the carbon bromine bond.